Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with a full case of 2021 Topps Archives Baseball. Random team break number two. One spot gets you two random teams, no vet commons chip, and the Indians will get any non-sport autographs since the Indians don't have any hits. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so let's see. Cleveland plus non-MLB hits, cards and hits. All right, so now let's roll it, randomize it. Two and a one, three times. Oh, let's double your names up. So names and teams three times. One, two, and three. Three times. We got TJ down to Chris. <laughs> Chilo, you want me to sneak you in for the Royals? You can pretend you have the Royals and then watch along, follow along in this break. Two and a one, three times for... The teams, yeah, if no one shows up for a movie that's the theater, do they still show it? Braves down to Reds. I feel like yes. I mean, just in case there are people who come in late, I guess. TJ with the Braves, Travis with my Dodgers, David with the Brew Crew, William with the Yankees, Ryan with the Red Sox, Travis with the Astros, TJ with the Blue Jays, Ryan with the A's, Kevin with the Mets, Narek with the Cubs, Richard with the Giants, Barry with the Rays, Charles with the White Sox, Richard with the Phillies, Chris with the Royals, the Cleveland plus non-MLB card slash hits, and the Marlins. Kevin with the Cardinals, Narek with the Twins, Jonathan with the Pirates, TJ with the Rangers, Charles with the Nationals, William with the Angels, Barry with the Diamondbacks, David with the Rockies, Chris with the Tigers, TJ with the Mariners, Chris with the Padres, Jonathan with the Orioles, Chris Maxwell with the Cincinnati Reds. Let's alphabetize by team. And we're in a pause video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Then we'll have the break. Stick around. All right, welcome back, folks. There was a ton of trade chatter. There were deals flying around back and forth. Um... But in the end, no one, could, no one could figure out a deal. But there was a lot of trade chatter, the most I've ever seen in my, in my years of breaking here at Jaspies. But unfortunately, no deals were done. But you should have seen some of the negotiations. All right. Let's pop this case open. Let's see what we got. This is going to be kind of a long break, so... Settle in. I do have another long break after this, so we're going to try to speed through these as quickly as possible. But I will do a recap at the end of autographs and other hits. And when you're watching the replay, you can also use the YouTube feature. When we do the recording, there's a YouTube feature where you can um, slow the video down. Oh, these are, I think these little posters are pretty cool. Unfortunately, they just kind of toss them into the boxes, but they're pretty fun. That'll go to the Yankees, of course. But yeah, there's a feature on YouTube where you can slow down the video to like, I don't know how slow you can get it, maybe half speed, perhaps. So you can kind of spot, uh, take a look at some different moments if you want to. Royals are one of those teams I can sneak you into a break. No one would care. I think Chris Maxwell would care. But see, if I gave you the Royals, then everyone thinks they deserve free spots. And they were giving away free spots in all these breaks, and then everyone was... And then where would we be? We're giving away teams. Wait, so this break says... Veterans, so what are the commons? Oh, I guess maybe these are, these are the commons, right? And everything else are inserts. I'll be, I'd be willing to bet that most of these are going to chip, ladies and gentlemen. At least 
these packs are pretty pretty easy to open, so that should save us a little bit of time. Good luck, everybody. Oh, and there's our autograph. Shea Hillen. Remember Shea Hillenbrand? There it is. Toronto Blue Jays. That's going to go to TJ and the Bluebirds. I don't know. Maybe they all fell asleep, Gilo. Larry Doby to 75. And just in the interest of time, we're going to set those aside. We'll have our sorting and shipping team sleeve and top load those numbered cards. And in case I miss any like numbered cards, don't worry. Our, our team will catch it and make sure they get sent off to you. Seventeen people watching, only Gilo chatting. You know what they say in the radio industry, um, is that you can in, you oftentimes all you have to do is intentionally say something wrong, something incorrect, and there'll be plenty of people. There's a Sal Perez that could have been you, Gilo. You just say something incorrect, and then there'll there'll be plenty of people who would wanna who would wanna correct you. Oh, another autograph, Mike Cameron. That's uh, his son, Daz Cameron, who you've seen a lot of great prospect cards over the last year or two. That's his son, Daz Cameron. It's Mike Cameron's his dad. That's for the Mariners. That's going to go to TJ and the M's. Go TJ. Oh, Ryan Harold is still here. All right, that was the first box. So yeah, we're looking for two two on card autographs per box. Oh, Oliver's here. We got Oliver. All right, see, we got, we got some some night owls creeping in here. That poster for the mini poster for the Mariners. Jay Buhner, Edgar Martinez, Ken Griffey Jr., and the big unit, Randy Johnson. David B's here. Oh, just disappointed. Waited three days to get the Brewers and the Rockies. Well, I feel like there's also there's all these random old school players for those teams. Could there be like a Larry Walker for the Rockies or something like that? That I feel like that that's a name on the checklist. Right, yeah, TJ has been waiting for this the longest. I, longest maybe? He's certainly been the most eager to push this and he ended up with both autos in the first box. Almost a personal break for him. Oliver, no picks. What would you have picked? We'll, we'll, we'll believe you. I went with the uh, Dolphins plus seven and a half, I think. No total pick, though.
Yeah, or yeah, or maybe like a random Rocky, like Mark Grudzalonic. David B., remember Mark Grudzalonic? He was at an expo at one point, maybe? Was he? Or am I thinking of another second baseman? Delino De Shields, perhaps. find our next two autos. And we've got another like hour long break coming up after this folks. This might even take longer than an hour, but there's Daz Cameron, Mike's kid. And we've got Carl Erskine, old Dodger. Going to Travis. I don't remember Carl Erskine. A little bit before my time. Just a, just a tiny bit though. Oh man, remember the Killer Bees? Bagwell, Biggio, there were a couple others, weren't there? David Bell, maybe? Beltran, perhaps? We've got a Dallas Garcia, 45 out of 50 for the Rangers. That'll be for TJ. Derek Bell, did I say David Bell? Berkman, Lance Berkman was in the mix there too. And there's a Juan Soto autograph, nice. 16 out of 99. A 1963 Tops peel off autograph. I don't think you can actually peel it off here, but that's pretty cool. He's got nice penmanship. It's a nice number. That's Charles who won that spot and got randomized the Nats. There's another Juan Soto to 25, nice. And yeah, thankfully the parallels seem to, seem to quickly pop, so it's easy to catch those numbered cards. All right, next box. Big Red Machine. Yeah. Some nice players there. I'll go that we'll go to Chris Maxwell and the Reds. The Red Legs. I think they temporarily changed their name to the Red Legs for a while because they did not want to be associated with Reds as in uh, as in communists. You guys remember that? I don't know how many of you actually remember that. I only remember it from uh, reading that in books and maybe Ken Burns Baseball.
Joe Morgan was on that team. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like John the John Miller Joe Morgan Sunday Night Baseball combo is probably one of the best broadcasting duos for baseball as far as national broadcasts go. I think they they were they were pretty good, except when they would do Giants games. Man, when they would do Giants games, they would, they would just they would just fall fall over fall over each other's others uh, tongues. They were just wagging for the Giants. They loved the Giants so much. They'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, Barry Bonds and blah blah blah. And there's Tanner Hawk. That's for Ryan Harold and the Red Sox. 187 out of 200. 187, which I believe is still the, uh, the police code for murder, I want to say. 4 out of 75. Gio Rochelle, a little dark, but... But yeah... I don't know if that's changed since. And there's broadcaster Jose Moda. So that will go to the non-MLB team related hit card thing spot. Chris Maxwell with that one. Jose Moda. I get would that wait does that go to the Angels? Wait, what does the checklist say? See I guess we'll go by checklist first before I defer that over to something else. Let's go to groupratechecklist.com. No, that sorry, that goes to the Angels? Yeah, that's the only Jose Moda on the check. That'll go to the Angels. Sorry, Chris. False alarm, but that'll go to William and the Halos. This will defer the checklist first. Right. Thank you, Oliver, for the second. Yeah, we're going to go with groupratechecklist.com first. Rex has a question. Who was better back in their earlier days, Conseco with the A's or Bonds with the Pirates? I would say Barry Bonds? I actually can't say that I remember the early part of Conseco's career, but I think Bonds, Barry Bonds kind of hit the, hit the ground running. You guys remember that uh you guys remember that outfield? That Pirates outfield? I think it was either Bonilla or Bonds on one of the corners. I think Andy Van Slyke was uh was the center fielder there. Oh, Ryan Harold saying Bonds is the greatest player of all time. Early, late, and always. It's a strong statement. All right, next box. This one is the big three. Who are the big three? Ah, Tom Glavin, John Smoltz, and Greg Maddox. But no love for Steve Avery. You guys remember Steve Avery? Rex got to see Conseco, McGuire, and Henderson in Oakland against the White Sox. 
Yeah. That's a pretty that was a that's a pretty good team. We've talked about this before, but who are those? I keep forgetting. Who are those three pitchers for the Oakland A's in like the mid '90s or something like that, where where they were on Sports Illustrated and they had touted them as like the next big three, like next Glavin, Smoltz, Maddox. Maybe it was late '90s. I think only one of them actually panned out. I think as a closer, maybe. Maybe it was Isringhausen was one of them who never worked out with the A's and then ended up being a decent closer, though. I want to say Bill Pulse, Pulse, Pulsiper was another one. I feel like there was like a third dude and they, were, they would... It had to be maybe late 90s because I think they were being compared to like the big three that we just saw with the, the Braves. All right, next box, let's go. What do we got? No, it was maybe the third guy was Todd Van Pop. I don't know if it was Van Pop. There's Melvin Mora for the Orioles. I think it was the Isringhausen sort of era, but it was not not. But that that was supposed to be a really big do uh, trio as well. Tim Hudson, Mark Mulder. And uh, and Scully, Mulder and Scully. No, and Barry Zito. Barry Zito, bit of a bit of a guitar player. There's uh, Jordan Alvarez, ninety six out of one fifty. Yeah, Todd Van Poppel was definitely one of those really big, highly touted players. Did they, was he really compared to the next Nolan Ryan? Maybe, I mean, maybe at the time that made sense. Like father, like son. And there's Eric Chavez. Eric Chavez was part of the, wasn't he in was he part of those early, those Moneyball teams in the movie? And there you go. That's for the A's. And that's going to be for Ryan Harold, who won that spot, got randomized the A's. We got the Beebs to 125 for the Tribe. That's going to be for Chris. I guess in 2022 sets, we're going to start seeing them as the Guardians. I wonder, do you think you can buy old... Uh, I mean, do you think they're doing that? Do you think you can... Oh, and here's Uncle Larry. 
Nice, Andrew McCutcheon. Um, do you think you can buy old Cleveland Indians, like, stuff? What do you think happens to all that stuff? I mean, they must have a bunch of signs and tons of stationery and promotional ballpoint pens and <laughs> mouse pads, maybe. Where does all that go? Does it does it get just thrown to a storage unit? Get recycled, go in the trash can? Oliver remembers the 1990 Van Poppel XRC from Classic. Yeah, Todd Van Poppel, 11 and 3 with a 0 0.97 ERA and 170 strikeouts as a senior in Martin High School in Arlington, Texas. Drafted in the first round, 14th overall, by the A's directly out of high school in the 1990 Major League Baseball draft. The Braves had seriously considered using the first overall pick on Van Poppel, but however, when Poppel explicitly told the Braves he would not sign with them, the team opted instead to take future Hall of Famer Chipper Jones. Wow, that worked out. This is according to Wikipedia. Van Poppel was one of the first first of the four starting pitchers selected by the A's in the first 36 picks of the 1990 draft. Referred to at the time as the four aces. Whoops. The other three draftees were Don Peters, Dave Zancanaro, and Kirk Dressendorfer. All four struggled with injuries after being drafted. Only Van Poppel and Dressendorfer ever reached the major leagues. So there, there's your Van Poppel update. Reti Shortly after retirement in 2005, he announced that he was investing in the Denton Outlaws, a Texas collegiate league team. The Outlaws went on to win the, the league championship that year. But Wikipedia has no other information beyond that. But I'm sure with a unique name like Van Poppel, he'll probably be able to figure out what else he's doing. Different first. It almost looked like that was a black foil on that name. You think they're required to destroy everything? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to know for sure what they have to do with that. I wonder if it's different for the NFL, if like the requirements are different for the NFL or whatever, what have you. Maybe, maybe Rex, maybe I'll have to just go to Cleveland and and get to the bottom of this. Could be a could be a could do like a little video for it. And we got Steve Bloss. Everyone remembers, I don't remember Steve Bloss. But there he is. For the Pirates, Jonathan Arnaldi. Jonathan might remember Steve Bloss. Maybe? No, maybe not. I don't know.
you know, the the Van Poppel hype is what makes um, Oliver nervous about like for other overhyped or well hyped players, possibly overhyped players. Jason Dominguez maybe. Oh, there's Jose Canseco. We were just talking about him. His ears were burning. That goes to uh, Ryan Harold and the A's. I got Luke Voigt. 57 out of 99. All right, halfway through this break. There's the boys of Zimmer. There you go. Ryan Sandberg, Andre Dawson, and Greg Maddox. Remember when Greg Maddox won a Cy Young and then the Cubs traded him? Or was he a free agent? Oh, maybe he was a free agent. Free agency was pending for Maddox. Yeah, I know, this, this, this is just such a Cubs thing to do. After consecutive 15 win seasons in 1990 and 91, Greg Maddox won 20 games in 1992, tied for the NL lead, and was voted his first National League Cy Young Award. Free agency was pending for Maddox, according to, uh, according to Wikipedia, but contract talks with the Cubs became contentious and eventually ceased. I, I, I feel like we can apply that, that line to current Cubs players, and it would still apply. But contract talks with the Cubs became contentious and eventually ceased. Both Chicago general manager Larry Himes and Maddox's agent Scott Boris, of course, accused the other of failing to negotiate in good faith. Cubs eventually decided to pursue other free agents, including Jose Guzman, Dan Plesak, and Candy Maldonado. After seven seasons in Chicago, Maddox signed a five-year, $28 million deal with the Braves. That was probably a lot back then. Five-year, $28 million? Some guys get paid $28 million in a year. I don't know what that is, adjusting for inflation. Greg Maddox's control though, legendary. Legendary. What is it? What, what do they call that? A, a Greg Maddox shutout? It was like complete game shutout and under a hundred pitches. I think that's something that Greg Maddox did a number of times. And we've got Mark Loretta. Padres, old Padres second baseman, Mark Loretta. Rex reminiscing about Jody Davis. Wasn't Jody Davis a Padre at some point too? Mark Loretta going to Chris Maxwell and the Friars. Speaking of Marks, Ryan Harold has a ton of Mark Appels. What a bust. Yeah, he had a lot of hype too. Did he even, I think he got drafted but never signed and then went to college? And then get drafted again, and then I think maybe promptly got injured or something, and I don't think he's in baseball anymore. Oh, and Frank Viola. 
Frank Viola without a mustache? Does, doesn't he usually have a great stash? Like, he could be part of the Jaspies all-mustache team. Huh. It's not the Frank Viola I remember. Yeah. That's not Viola. It's Viola, it's, you gotta have a stash. Anyway, that goes to Narek and the twins. Stashless Mark Viola. He's the third number one pick never to play in the majors. Who are the other two? There's Alex Kirloff, nice, for the Twins to 25. That's going to go to Narek in Minnesota. Sam Huff to Oh, Mark Loretta was, I was like, where's the second autograph? Mark Loretta was the first autograph. All right, next box. Apparently there's a chill cot for them. Oh, here's the big three again. Oh, different big three. Barry Zito, Tim Hudson, Mark Mulder. This is what Ryan Harold was mentioning earlier. There was, they were as big as the Braves' big three. Do they get big three consideration? Oh, Oliver, I got to watch that. Yeah, Ryan, have you watched it? Brian Jordan did not, not only tried both baseball and football, I think he did play both baseball and football. I think he ended up doing more baseball at the end. But I think he did have some seasons that overlapped. <laughs> nice. Ryan Harold's like, of course I watched that documentary on the 86 Mets. Made me want to do blow and get on planes. and Yeah, that team was ridiculous. Brian Jordan played for the Dodgers, right, Oliver, for a little bit? Yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, the 86 Mets... Wikipedia page. They're, they had uh, they had Gary Carter, Keith Hernandez, Wally Blackman, Backman, Ray Knight, Rafael Santana, George Foster, Lenny Dykstra. That's right. With Lenny Dykstra was on that team too, and Daryl Strawberry. They also had they also had other guys. They had, they had guys like Mookie Wilson, Kevin Mitchell, Tim Tuffle, How Hojo, Howard Johnson. Danny Heat was on that team. I don't know these other guys. Ed Hearn, Lee Mazzelli, Kevin... I think I remember Kevin Elster. Stan Jefferson, John Gibbons, Dave Magadan. Didn't Wasn't he a manager at some point? Barry Lyons and Tim Cochran. Corcoran. And then the starting pitchers. Ron Darling, 
Dwight Gooden, Sid Fernandez. I think Sid Fernandez also had a good, uh, good mustache, didn't he? Uh, Bob Ojeda and then Rick Aguilera. I think Randy Myers was in the mix too. And then Roger McDowell with twenty with twenty three saves. Jesse Orozco at twenty one saves. Oh, did Sid, Sid Fernandez just pass away? R.I.P. All right. Next box. These archives making us think about blasts from the past, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no. Sorry. Ryan's saying it was Pedro Feliciano that recently passed away. There's Ricky Henderson to 50. The Man of Steel for the A's. That's going to be for Ryan Harold. It's his job now, Joey Bart, right there. The Blake Street Bombers. Blake Street's back, all right. Do, 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 do. And we got Jason Kendall. Jason Kendall was supposed to be was he? A st I feel like he was supposed to be like bigger than 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 he he. I think he had a solid career. I think he had a two eighty eight average, ninety five home runs, two thousand one hundred ninety five hits. He's from Torrance. Oliver, did you know he's from Torrance? I didn't know he was from Torrance. Who is a better multi-sport player, Bo or Dean? Yeah, Bo Jackson for sure, easily. I guess Jason Kendall could be watching. Hi, Jason. Sorry, I just feel like there was a lot more hype around your career, maybe. Maybe it turned out exactly exactly right though. I don't know. Gary Carter, the kid before the kid to seventy five, Mets edition, Kevin M, and the Amazons. And there's there's a non uh, major league baseball one. Greg Amzinger from MLB Network. Did Oliver lose any? Does everyone have the stream? No, I'm I'm still recording. I'm I'm still looking good. At least on my end. Garrett Crochet to one fifty for the White Sox. Greg Amzinger goes to um, goes to Chris Maxwell. Three boxes to go. Slam Diego. Next box. Right, yeah, Bo throwing out runners, breaking bats over his knees. 
I think that's when I realized um, that that was possible. That a human being <laughs> uh, could break a bat over one's knee. Previously, of course, I just thought that it's impossible. Can't do that. I'm sure there were several players, Rex, who attempted to break bats over one's knee and then they just was un unable to do it. Well, I don't know if it's as easy as it may seem. And, I mean, usually players can hear when the bat is broken and it's easier to break a bat. You know, maybe they... Maybe there was a cut fastball and it cracked their bat and they struck out or they were fouled out or something like that and they were angry and they, they can break the bat. But I want to say that, that Bo Jackson could probably just break that bat over his knee without, without a crack in it. I think he's just that, that powerful. And there's Paul DeYoung. <laughs> these are kind of funny, just like these floating heads right here. That kind of cracks me up. Cardinals, Kevin with the Redbirds. Gets the Paul DeYoung, 67 out of 99. It's Anthony Rizzo to 25 for the Yankees. And we've got, we've got Gene, Gene Tenace. I don't think I've ever heard of this guy. There he is. is that not number? Oh, not numbered, I guess. That goes to the Oakland A's. That'll be for Ryan Harrell. Ryan, do you, do you remember this guy? I mean, he played for a long time. It's Michael Brantley to 125. That is for Travis and the Astros. Boys of Summer. And we got a Juan Soto. 45 out of 50 for Charles and the Nats. All right, two boxes to go. Oh, that Gene guy, Ryan saying, he won three straight championships with the A's in the 70s. All right. So my, my apologies, Gene. I should put some more respect on that name. We are family, the family. Dave Parker, Willie Stargell, and Manny Sanguian. 
for the Buckos. That's going to go to Jonathan. And he was a 1972 World Series MVP. All right, got to put some respect on his name. All right, two boxes to go. And that, that's all Ryan has for us. No, that's good. It's more, more info than I had. boxes to go this one and then one more and then we'll be done and then uh, we'll close out the night with Chronicles I may pass out in the middle of that break Maybe Had a lot of long breaks back to back to back to back Oh, yeah. Did you find all the colors and stuff? In the beginning, I didn't notice those differences of colors. What? Like the numbered cards in the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I got a stack of those here. Some numbered cards. I did happen to catch one short plan. It was crazy, though. See, these aren't numbered. The... I forget what the code ends in, but it was like a Bryce Harper, like a 57. And it was weird because it looked exactly identical as the normal one, but the only thing is that it looked like a lighter shade. Like if they, you know, like the color oh. was running out. So we were thinking like, oh, maybe it's just uh, like they're trying to tell you what kind of older the card looked like actually, like with the ink. So, yeah. But it was weird. That's the only short print I haven't been catching. I haven't seen anything especial here. Yeah. So Chris with the Padres. Vlad Guerrero Jr. to 125 for the Blue Jays. That'll be for TJ. Harold, just give me the keys to your Marina Del Rey house that's just <laughs> sitting there. I'll take care of it. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll all take care of it. <laughs> With 50 of our closest friends. And there's Carlos Zambrano for the Cubbies. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if everything just ships out of here, to be honest with you. There's another Ricky Henderson, this time 22 out of 150 for the A's. That'll be for Ryan Harold. <laughs> Your buddy's throwing parties over there already. Right, yeah, charge 10, bu 10 bucks a head. You gotta help, help pay for the keg too, come on. And here's a baby Mike Trout. Baby Trout, do 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 do. <laughs> Ladies free in a tank of nuts. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. That sounds, that sounds like a that sounds like a, a classic uh, a classic flyer party there. Classic flyer party, Jason Jaspi. Four locos, two for ten. 
But you have to get old batch Four Locos before they changed the formula. After after kids went too crazy on that. Get that old batch Four Locos. They changed the formula on that, and then and then just wasn't as potent. <laughs> There's a group of black aces here. Oliver saying four loco never? Never ever or never again? <laughs> Yeah, the old stuff. The old stuff was great. Never again. Kids do blow out. They don't need the Red Bull. I guess, yeah. I, I guess there's there's access to to other things nowadays, I suppose. Prescription Adderall. Yeah, those four locos were. Yeah, those are heart attacks waiting to happen. Wow, some kid, some el where where did where where did this happen? Rex, Rex is saying some kid took edibles to an elementary school and passed them out to his friends, and the kids got really sick. Did you, Ryan? Ryan, a little little criminal back in the day. Stole cartons of Marlboro Lights from the Seven Eleven in high school. And would you would you would you like sell Lucy's like on the streets? I suppose yeah. The statute of limitations has probably run out on that. Unless that Seven Eleven owner is sitting there going with, with like your picture, going with well, there's one someday. Someday. Dude, there was this guy at I'll get one that of the guy. local. It wasn't even a 7-Eleven. It was like a gas station. Uh -huh. But every Friday he was working from eight to night and shit, and uh -huh. he already knew that he would never card you. Like he just. Oh always, yeah, you gotta find always, that guy. Yeah. He always just gave it to us, and you know he kind of charged a little bit more than the price because he was probably. Right, you probably money, pocketed this, yeah. But you know it was, it was easy. Never had to worry. Always have to find that guy. The only thing is we had to, we had to buy beer and like four locals. You know we didn't we couldn't buy like real alcohol because it was like a gas station. Right. But four locos, that's I mean, enough. that's that's powerful I enough. I was like, when we didn't have no powerful two enough. for five, like, that's all I need. It's just one of those. That's all, that's all you need. <laughs> and there's Chen Ming Wang for the Yankees. That will be for William and the Bronx Bombers. Yeah, he had, he had a couple couple good seasons, didn't he? Maybe more? He had two 19-win seasons in a row. We got a Nick Madrigal, 25 out of 25. Blue with some purple foil around the edge, too. We got Lou Brock, the speedy Lou Brock to 150 for the Cardinals.
Killer Bees. And Jason Kendall again. Local guy for the Pirates, Jonathan. And Ryan's like, I normally hate archives, but uh, this is actually some good stuff, yeah. 90 out of 99, yeah, not too bad. Not too shabby at all. I always like the sort of old looks. I just wish it was kind of half the size. But I do like seeing all the old designs. You get on-card autos and stuff, and it's not too shabby. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. Here's a quick recap of the autos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. I'm Joe, and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.